Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, it's time to balance your portfolios, close your positions, and stop reading all the ticker tape, because it's story time. This is about the world of finance. The world is in the middle, well, of the start of the 2008 financial crisis, where two years later, the year is 2010, we are, to be precise, on the morning, American time, New York time of the 6th of May. Uh, it's a Thursday. It's actually the UK general election, the 2010 one, um, but the markets are more concerned with the Greek debt crisis. And so hmm, the trading starts quite down. Do I have a laser pointer? Okay. Right. Trading starts down in a volatile market, I meaning the price is going up and down, like, you know, it doesn't really know what's going on. It's kind of, mm, the situation is fluid and complex. Um, and then you know, we're starting kind of to trade quite downwards in the Dow Jones, right? We started, we've already lost kind of quite a lot. Um, then at 2.30, again, US time, that's like, that's already a bad morning. It's not going to get better in the afternoon. Un unusually nervous trading pushes the overall volatility up sharply. The Dow is down 2.5, right? 10, 6, 600, uh, down 250, right? From 10, 800, that's 2.5%. It scans. Then 0.3, this is where it really starts. At 2.32 p.m. New York time, a program to sell $4.1 billion worth of e-mini futures uh, futures are sort of clumping. You buy the right to have a discount on the promise. So it's very, essentially, it's having value now. We're, we're looking at kind of future value and we're trying to turn future value into actual value now. And um, the problem is this kind of assumes that the world is going to continue to work as it does. Anyway, um, so a program, both in the sense of a you know deliberate um, action that was scripted, as well as technically an algorithm, and start it wants to shift four billion dollars worth of mm, this product, product on on this particular market. Other traders react by starting to sell because when there's a lot of selling, the price goes down. Um, now a lot of those traders, unfortunately, are algorithms, and algorithms do not have judgment. They don't see what's going on. So, so the selling in the future markets, we're nine minutes later, spreads to the stocks, right? Look at this drop. So like, we, this is the Dow. This started on a separate market. That's not the graph market. The graph is the actual New York Stock Exchange Dow Jones, right? The selling in the futures market spreads to the stocks. Automated trading programs react to the sharp drops by shutting the trough. Uh, 246, after trading in e-mini futures is supposed for five seconds. It only takes five seconds to stop the algorithm because they're high frequency traders called buying and selling all the time, HFTs. Uh, so 46, the Dow has lost 9.2, right? Um, that is trillions of, of, of dollar um, share for the value. In, in that space of time, you get 2 billion shares, not the futures here, right? Like this is the shares. This affects the real market of, you know, where the value now and, and values of companies, well, certainly market capitalization of companies. I would debate whether that's actually a value. Um, yeah, that, that, that <laughs> this is, this is essentially, um, very very bad so in that in that space of time um well like two billion shares shared changed hands for a total value of 52 billion dollars so some people have lost a lot of money some people have made a lot of money uh, it does recover quite quickly and the day ends trading you know at minus 3.2 which could have been a lot worse when it was at minus nine so what happened we look at the black box the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, investigated in five months. It took them that long to analyze five minutes of data. The CFTC is also involved. It's the similar regulation authority for futures, the, where the market where it started. They issue a report. They find who's at fault. They find that the big sell that started it, the trigger, it was automated based on the volume. So someone programmed it to say, hey, I need you to shift this $4 million worth of stock um, and do it. Don't worry about how low the price gets, but do, all, always kind of make your selling volume 9.9% .9 of the volume of the market, uh, except when the volume of the market grows, then that grows as well, right? With great consideration from the price. And then that was amplified and, and propagated by algorithmic high frequency trading. Um, there was also actual legit, you know, loopholes, um, like things like. Um, mm -mm, Oh, I can't remember. What it, I can't even remember what it's called. The whole have kind of gerons that are amusing, like front loading and fore running, and you know, shit. so like you, this stuff where you put the buy order in, and then that you know that gets published and it affects the market, and then you cancel it, 
and so like you've had the market move in the direction you wanted um, but that those loopholes got closed right so but still um, now this gets a little bit technical some people have kind of uh, simulated and recreated what went on uh, on that day so the nodes you're seeing are the, the traders the trading agents the top is the normal situation the high frequency traders the algorithms are on the left and the regular traders the rest the green ones on the right right the 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 arcs, the connections, represent uh, traders trading with each other. So I don't know if we see the green trading with each other, but presumably they do, obviously. But the way the high-frequency traders interact is by buying and selling at high frequency with actual, real, hopefully not algorithm traders. And then Algo, um, this order, tried to start selling the 4.1 billion, no million, worth of, um, billion, yeah, um, with a B, <laughs> worth of those e-futures. And it sells them to regular, uh, traders and to algorithmic traders and algorithmic traders <laughs> keep on buying it keep on driving the price down they're trading more and more with each other look at look all of the connections there right and then you know then the high frequency trader also shifting some on the regular market so you have this hot potato effect in that uh, algorithmic traders high frequency traders are programmed not to keep positions for very long and, and keep large inventory right like uh, trading up or down this is the normal mode of operation the nodes again the, the dots are the traders and the the arcs the connections represent them trading with each other we only showing what's going on within the algorithmic high frequency traders not with the outside world this is the normal on the left and then during the crash or certainly simulation of the crash in that instance uh, the set's kind of easy to reproduce that crash because it's algorithm so you can program the thing to simulate it um, the high frequency traders started taking really much larger position that they are programmed to be comfortable with as it were and were kept on trying to sell but because they were sort of selling and with each other um, that yeah that drove like the price down very very quickly essentially uh, so right hopefully you know we've, we've certainly closed the, the actual loophole for actual you know um cheating unethical bad you know malpractice malfeasance but in in 2015 on the swiss franc on the british pound sterling in 2016 at the yen in 2019 and as recently at may 2022 hmm. so in conclusion um you know Ah, sorry, there's another thing. Sorry, end on a, a nice high note. Uh, this happened a year later, in two years later, sorry, in, in 2012. And this is um, Amazon. This is a textbook set out of print about flies, right? And two sellers, third party sellers, were driven algorithmically and they were programmed to price just a little bit higher than the others. Because if you are a used book seller, a higher price kind of hints at a best, condi a better condition of the book, so it kind of makes sense. But because they were both doing this, right, uh, the the highest price today would reach was twenty three million dollars for a textbook about flies because of two algorithms just working with each other. So in conclusion, algorithms are great, but we, you know, there's a, there are algorithms that you use, you know, you kind of modeling your data you put data and you look at the data that comes out that's fine an algorithm play a video game that's fine it's like you're interacting with a human that's fine as the moment the algorithm make decisions you got to be very careful you got to ask yourself what if and especially when the data upon which they base the decision itself come from algorithms because then you're going to have resonance frequencies and they're the only limit to the speed of what's happening is the speed of transfer of information and processing so this is very very dangerous Hmm, uh, hand on a high note. Ah. <laughs>